Right guys, so it's a nice Monday night, about six, seven, seven o'clock. And uh, Ben's back here for round two. But with the right Howdy. gear this time. So um, I apologize in advance if this guy's a bit uh, dusty. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, I've had 24 hours to recover. <laughs> Whenever he goes away for work, he always seems to... Over get on the reds. Get on the reds too much. Slightly. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're having a look at the manual. Um, it's sort of partly from this manual and partly from the ARB manual that we'll be following. So the first thing we want to do is get the bearing set up on the on the pinion gear so that we can put them into the casing, see where the height sits, and then on top of that place the ARB uh, diff on top, so that uh, we can work out how much we're going to machine off the pinion. Because we will need to machine, won't we? Yes. Um, so that's all pretty straightforward, and, and then in between all of that, we need to provision the pinion with the new carrier bearings. Uh, sorry, the, the diff carrier. That's the old diff, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so the air locker, we need, to, but we need to put these bearings on as well to support it so that we can slot it into the um, diff pumpkin yeah. and see Actually, what that the reminds me of one second. Oh, we have I'll let you. Okay, so we're going to heat. get that out. We're going to heat the uh, ground here on the heating pump. Get that up to 100 ish, and that will help it sit on this spigot on the air locker of course, um, nice and firm. So, a couple of things we want to keep in mind uh, along the process of this whole thing. Number one, uh, we, we will also heat the bearings to help ease them onto the journal. Before we do that, we're going to mic the journals and measure them up. Uh, when you heat the bearings to press them on, you need to make sure that when they cool down, they stay perfectly abutted against the flange that they need to go up against because they will shrink uh, as they cool down. No one ever does that. Whenever I've watched that, no one ever yeah, checks. You have to check it. Tapping it. Let it come down to room temperature. Check that because a lot of people talk about um, this spacer. This is a collapsible spacer. This oh, spacer can we getting, please start this debate? Oh, yeah. Blow up your comments. They talk about <laughs> this getting crushed additionally in service due to heavy loading, whatever. Personally, I can't see how that happens. If you look at the drawing of how it all works, etc., I'll leave that to you as the viewer to have a thought experiment by yourselves on, on that. Um, what I think probably happens is that because when you assemble a crush spacer, you don't just reef on it as tight as possible. You don't actually put enough load to reseat the bearing that isn't seated properly, okay? And that, that probably is what um, it sort of covers up an earlier fitment mistake there. Whereas if you use one of these, you can't reef it up. So then in service, that bearing moves a little bit against the abutment that it wasn't sitting against when it's fully installed and you lose preload. So that'll make sense a bit later when we look at the proper um, assembly. So you reckon that a solid spacer merely makes people It check. forces you yeah. to put a lot of load on the whole assembly to clamp it all together because you need to take up all that tension. Um, and then you check the end plate, and then you disassemble it all apart again, and then and then correct the spacer by adding shims or by machining it shorter to get more preload. When you use a, a collapsible spacer, you only wind it on just fractionally, just enough, till you get the right um, torque when it's assembled on the bench. And then in service, things are going to move, heat cool, heat cool, and those bearings are going to move up against the abutment if they weren't already up there. So. That'll make more sense yes. a bit later on when we have a look at it. But Shall we look at the, all the uh, look at all the goodies? So we're look at the goodies. <laughs> we have the pinion seal, so brand new pinion seal with a wiper lid. We have these two other carrier bearings. So and yes, I checked all the numbers; they're all the same. Yep. So they should be start. the same. These are 50 mil bearings that sit on this carrier here. Yeah. And so then, um, if you haven't seen the previous video, we basically realized that we had a 120 Prado uh, pumpkin and obviously bearings which are bigger which is a good thing but it meant we had to order extra gears well the gears were fucked anyway so we had to do that but yeah a couple of weeks have elapsed and these two are the pinion bearings so in this particular design pumpkin they've upgraded the pinion bearings to a heavier duty bearing you can see it's quite a lot thicker section so those are the two pinion bearings Okay, 
So a big shout out to uh, East Coast Gear Service over in America. Ordered, well, I ordered those and they came within like four days or something. And they're cheaper than anywhere you can get in Australia by a long shot. So. It. And some uh, instructions. Is that the right ratio? <laughs> That's just an oh. example ratio. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so they they talk about the check distance, get you roughly right for a nine inch, a little bit of a pattern. That's pretty cool. Breaking period, need to observe that as well. Uh, gives you a guide for the ring gears. That's all cool. That's good. Yep. Okay, here's the new gears. So also, I checked the spline of our yoke. Yep, oh. and, the th and the threads. Yep, everything's good. I marked these as well, they're the same as the old one. Yep. And gear twos look pretty good. A bit of white stuff on them. You've been playing with this in private, have you? <laughs> Um, so that looks like the serial number, I think, 144. It's either that or it's the offset distance. It's usually offset, isn't it? I Sometime. think that, that might be the one there. 2441, 2.441, two inches. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what this says. 144, so this is gear set 144. Um, and the set distance is Two inches, four four one. Um, okay, we need to check that. If that height's wrong, we're gonna have to shim, pull, punch the bearing out and shim it up and back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which we don't have a shims. I brought shim stock. We could cut that out. Um, Let's hope it doesn't come to that. You didn't have to do yours, did you? No, mine was mine's, mine. Yours, was set. mine yours was were nitro, nitro, mine were nitro gear sets. These are loaded, but they look pretty good. So the reason why we're doing all this. So this is second hand but new. Obviously your airline. We've got fitting, we've got new adjusters. Um, that's your little air adapter, whatever you call it. We can't forget the thing that you forgot. Oh, the Which was retaining that? clip. Retaining the, little, clip. the little spring clip, that one there. Yes. Conveniently on the last page of Manual. The manual. That uh, I think when we did yours, we were pretty much asleep by then. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> you got the new O-ring seals, so that's good. Nice that's an X, X section seal instead of just the normal O-ring cord, which is important. Very nice. That's good. Okay. All right, let's get to the good bit. And here we go. The old R132. I think RD132. RD132. RD That's it. We'll see that more in a sec. All right, so I'm just taking all the shit off the pinion. So that's good to go. Move up there. Benny has the ring gear and the bearing on the hot plate. Very important not to go over, what, 110 yeah. tops with a bearing. Technically they're stable to 120, but you don't want to go about 110, 100-ish. Normally that should be enough for most interference fits, or um, transition fits in this case because um, they're only dimensionally stable to that temperature and it's easy to overheat them. So, 110, um, for all the ones I've done, have been more than enough. So they're heating up on the hot plate and they heat from the bottom up. So, it's just like a, sort of like an industrial grill. We'll try to keep the heat in. Yep. So what have you been up to on this bench while I've been cleaning? So, just inspecting the... Um, I was wondering why my Dremel sounded different. It's your one. Yeah, I could oh, have oh it's in my so, cupboard. Uh, I'm all professional now. Got cupboards. So you have to check the bearing seats really carefully because when you just punch the bearings out, it's really easy to deform the soft casing. So you can see over here, I've already started deburring all the burrs because what happens is you get high spots like that, and that's a really bad burr sitting there. Another one there. Yeah, they so, they're, so they're just little burrs that sit up, and what happens is it's a good half mil. Same thing when you when you press the bearing seat down into it, it's going to sit on top of this burr. 
because the load is going to be pretty light compared to the service load. So when you're driving and you've got impact, the axial load is going this way down. That's why it's the biggest bearing. Uh, and it's going to sit high on that on that burr and you set your bearing preloads against that and then later on what's going to happen is um, if you have really high loads you can flatten the burr back out uh, and then you're going to lose your bearing preload because it wasn't sitting in the right spot so this is as why it pays to check everything yeah you got to check it well, you got to know everything. to check it actually yeah so um, just going along and I'm going to take those high spots off especially that big burr there and there before big you put burr, the there. big burr big burr <laughs> Uh, and then the same on the other side. The other side is not so bad. Um, in fact, there's not really any burrs um, in there, but yeah, just check all of these surfaces first because if you start pressing a bearing in and then you realize, then you need to do some grinding to relieve it. It's hey ben, just gonna just, get messy. Uh, one thing. So. Don't scratch the Juco. Watch the Juco, bro. Don't scratch the Juco of my pumpkin. I'll just uh, inspect it for any runs. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't look too close. <laughs> no, lovely job on there. The other thing is, on, on this face here... Oh, you'll you be can, impressed by it on the, the axle. You can see that there's some rust, that, there's some burrs here from where it's been removed. Another one over here. Um, and I did see one... Oh, here. So there's, there's a fair bit of rust and stuff. I'll so. grab my all stone and I'll yeah. clean that up. So um, before we start fitting out the pumpkin, we've got to blow out all the holes, make sure they're all clean, all the galleries, all the burrs, nicks, um, and little champers need to be taken off here, as well as any on the mating surface here, so that when we bolt it up, we get a nice leak-free uh, diff, and it's easy to set up. So see in here, this is the threaded adjuster where you set the um, uh, preload. backlash. The backlash and the preload, actually. So. If you shift the whole assembly backwards or forwards, you increase or decrease the preload, uh, the backlash, sorry. And if you wind them in closer or further apart, that adjusts the preload. So but genius. You see in here, it's rusty and full of junk in this thread here. So I'll have to wire brush. Yeah, I'll get the wire brush on the Dremel and clean that out. Same with up here. At the, see, that's all muck that's it from out there. And, and the same with the caps. And of course, this surface here and the cap surface. So if you have a look here, you can see it's burred over in the corner here, just from, it's like a handling damage or something. So we're gonna have to get the file and knock that corner off and this one here. And if you watched my previous video about stripping this diff down, these caps have to go back in the same spot because they are line honed in place. Yeah, so I think you got one center pop mark there. Yes. All right, so we'll uh, spend the next hour prepping everything up, but for you guys, it'll should be right now. All right, so you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Um, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while and seen the dip build video on my custom turbo ute, um, you might recall that we had a bit of a thermal incident on the lathe. So I'm just going to do it in stages and let it cool down in between. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. So basically, you'll see in a minute when we actually turn the pinion down, but when you're turning hard and steel, it produces very hot molten sparks. And when you've got stuff like, especially Delrin, with cutting oil on it, um, even like this swarf, it can get to the point where it gets that hot that it catches on fire. So we actually basically set a fire off in the tray of the lathe. So I'm just gonna clean this all out while Ben's prepping that pumpkin. Benny, I just realised what the time was. Is it? Dinner time. Dinner time. Are you hungry? Absolutely. Shall we order some food? Something underway. Um, what do you feel like? Pizza. Exactly what I was thinking. Let's get some delivery. Mm. 
That looks good. Come on, Benny. What'd you get? Lamb? Mediterranean land. Ooh, gourmet. Oh. Let's have a scroll through. I think I'll get the... The vegan halal paleo caveman one. Nah, not really. I was gonna say you can uh, hurt the door. <laughs> can I get the halal bacon one? <laughs> I think meat deluxe is a very workshop type pizza. No, I don't want waffles. Alright, so most importantly, dinner is on its way, so. In the meantime, I think Ben's finished cleaning the pumpkin by the looks of it. So I think we will need a bearing tool. I think they're in here. Oh. All right, going up, Ben. Oh, just a bit more. Yeah. And it's, this it's, one. it's this one or the next one up. Too big. Too big. No, no, that's small that's one. Small. Where's your where's your old one? We'll just it's return. Oh, the set for everything. All right, guys. Uh, I'll show you a neat little trick if you've got a lathe, which most of you probably don't. But it's a neat trick to watch. Yeah, it looks cool. You can do it on a belt sander if you really want to. Yeah, I suppose. So you might have seen this in such episodes as. Wheel bearing. It wasn't the wheel bearing. Front wheel bearing. I Is turned. Front wheel bearing? Oh, I yeah, front wheel bearings, I turned it down. Yes. Front wheel bearings, you would have seen this. But basically, chuck this up, turn it down a little bit. Um, there we go. So when you're turning hard and steel, full speed. You probably won't do it too well with smaller kind of lathes, but um, this one's a nice three-phase big boy, so. So then after a while you turn, you know, half a mil off or whatever and that just enables you to basically press it in and it doesn't get stuck because it's obviously not the same OD as the bearing you're pressing in, which is an interference fit. So I won't bore you guys with this. We'll show you full time uh, when we do the pinion, but yeah, neat little tricks. So pretty. All right, let's roll. Let's keep going. Wrong way, Ben. Oh. Now I see. All right guys, I'm sure you've all seen this before in numerous bearing install videos. In case you haven't, bearing mounting paste or anti-fretting paste designed to aid with install. It's good and also it. stops it fretting. It's good for what ails you. barely fits in there. Hey. I need the flatter ones just because it's it doesn't Oh stick. yes. You should be able to hear a sound difference when it's bottomed out guys. Yeah she normally squeals. <laughs> So handy to have off cut stop. That's it. Just the puppy. So just the final one. Make sure everything's lined up. She in. So, do you remember the check that you can also do? 
Yes. Wheel blades. Got a little bit of shit on there. That's just the main face. Was it a bit raw? Uh, a few bits of grit. Keep your eye. And also, if you hadn't broken this torch, it broke itself. Let's be honest. So you can also look for mounting paste squeezing out. Yeah, and also just like if you have a bit of an air gap, but don't be tricked by the areas where we've deburred it and it's got a yeah. slight chamfer. That's pretty good. Well, it sounded good. Didn't yeah. sound like it was going any further. That's it. That's good there. So now we'll go over and have a look at this pinion. Okay. Well, in my opinion, dinner should be here soon. So we want to make sure there's no burrs or anything in there. That's good. Did you mic this? Yeah, I'm no, I didn't. Mic I don't have a mic proper though. No. I have an iometer. <laughs> Does that count? Yeah, your, your iometer is almost as good as your mic prometer. It has its good and bad days, let's be honest. Benny's forgotten his micrometers, so... If that's the worst thing I've done today, I'm doing well. <laughs> Alright, so... You can do this top thing. not over yet. <laughs> technically or, or... Technically sorry, sorry. or functionally? Go on, go on. Alright, anyway. I don't want to distract you too much. Um, so, when you're trying to do any sort of precision measuring with your verniers, try not to break the screen. <laughs> but if you've broken the screen and it still works, <laughs> Um, first, first thing is just to check that the jaws are clean, so inside here, or the anvils, and then bring them up to zero and, and make sure that they're zero. They're so zero. Okay, can you try mate? Good stuff. It's a bit of a feel. 35. Yeah. 35.02. And then 90 degrees to where we measured before. 35, 20. That's the ticket. One. Just gonna check this taper, hot tapered. So in a narrow seat like that, it's not so critical. It's very unlikely that it's gonna be tapered, but you can check up here and here in two spots. And that's pretty good. So, <clears throat> if you notice, it's 30 and 35. 35 is the nominal dimension. This side here is the non-adjusted bearing because it sits hard against the shoulder. And then this one here adjusts um, as you set the preload. If you notice, this was slightly heavier interference fit than here. This was 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 10 to 20 microns over. This was bang on, if anything, oh, uh, so 10 microns under. You're saying that the standard bearing is 35 on the dot. The standard bearing is 35 minus. So it can be 35 or slightly smaller than 35. That's the allowable tolerance. What's slightly smaller? Uh, for something like, oh, it's in the heat of plate. For that, it will be maybe at max five microns. Okay. According to DNI, so. So this is the one that goes on there. And I'll just have a measure. So even though it's zero, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be size for size when you take into account tolerance stack. There you are, it's eight microns under. Or six, oh, you're pretty six, good. six microns under. So what within, you know all this? Somebody's got to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well that's, that's within the measuring accuracy of that unit, so you can just put it up. So what that means is, if we put a bit of mounting paste here and here, that's gonna help us when we're trying to set that in float um, in terms of getting it to move. Just knock all my extension leads and... I know. You know how long it took me to... Just don't worry, all right? Well, we'll time you this time around when you do it. <laughs> okay. All right, down tools. <laughs> now we should do this first and let the um, the heat let come Let the out pizza cool it. down? Yeah. Okay. The right. pizza will be fine. Okay. It'll be fine. All right, all right. Oh, uh, look, I'm, you're right. Look, it's hard, but I know you're right. So. Just stay warm. Actually, we can put them on your uh, heating plate. 
Piece by piece. <laughs> Guys, that is why it pays to keep, keep old bearing. Keep your old rings. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. So that. Ben's tube was just too big and was going to hit on the um, outer cage. Next thing, always check the GA drawing. So, we have a look here. You can see there's a drive pinion, plate washer, and then bearing. And they show you that in the instructions. The instructions. You're right there, you're using all my bookmarks. Yeah. You're just lucky I didn't peel the sticky side off. <laughs> Shot fired. There it is. Uh, so that's the outer plate, and then here's the here's the uh, pinion, and you can see the plate, and then the bearing. So they haven't made it ob exceedingly obvious when they press the pinion in. They have they do say install the plate washer on the drive pinion, use SST special service tool, and install taper roller bearing inner. So it's not shown explicitly in the picture there. You can see it just there. But in the in the exploded drawing, they do show it there. Plate washer, then you know, taper roller bearing. So you're really really careful because that's a bug if you've. Uh, oh yeah, big time. Yeah. But mine didn't actually have one when we pulled it apart. It didn't have one there. Are you talking about the? There's a plate washer there. Yeah, it time. had a washer, but it. Or are you talking about not the sling out of the? Well, the oil dude. Yeah, so that's the oil control. No, yeah, not that one. There yeah. should be a plate. This one. That one. It's got the um, HPC coating or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the one that came from that position? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Got that. Man, those pizzas smell so good. No good. Let's do this job properly. I forgot to order drinks. Yeah. I've, only got, I've only got beers in the fridge. Oh. White beers. You know what I th I've thought? Light beers for the workshop only. Because <laughs> you can't get too far gone. This is for the wrong thing. This is the outer one. This one that goes there. Well, I didn't have anything else. Really? Yeah. Isn't it the other thing that goes there? No, there should be one more that goes here. This could be a showstopper. Okay, so that's dinner out of the way. Ben's been doodling. Want to tell a story? <laughs> no, you can do it. So, um, when we were checking the um, stack up assembly of the bearing on the pinion and so on, the diagram shows this spacer that's here between the pinion and the inner race of the taper roller bearing. So, we went naturally hunting for that part, which doesn't exist, it's not there. Never and was there. Well, it's probably there originally, but someone's rebuilt the diff or something and it's not there anymore. But basically, what this spacer does is it sets the pinion height. So, normally, um, in other manufacturers, they put a shim under the cup here um, to adjust the pinion height. Toyota decided they would put a spacer here. A couple of reasons. Maybe it's also to control oil egress from the gear or other things like that. Not sure. But if it's not there to control the oily grass, it's a fucking stupid spot to put it because the ring is really tight on the shaft. So if you have to change that, you have to pull the whole bearing out. Try yeah, not that's to a real bad. Yeah, try not to destroy it because normally you cut these off. Yeah, um, that, I, I actually tried to get my split bearing puller around yeah. that and I could not do it. Um, so you want to be really careful with that. Um, and also, if you had the shims under the cup, it's really easy to push the cup out, shim it and reassemble it again. And there's plenty of height, so I'm not sure why they don't do that. So, at first we thought we were hashtag fucked, but now we appear to be not so fucked because we come up with a bit of a plan. So what we're gonna do is, on the pinion, they've marked um, from manufacture the control distance from the face of the pinion to the center line of the diff gear, which is there. And that should be 2.144 inches or 54.458 millimeters. The tricky thing is, the center of the pinion floats in free space. So it's very difficult to measure to the center line of this bore here. So what we'll do is we'll put an arbitrary tube between the two bores and then measure from the top of the tube 
down to the face of the bearing here and then we'll add the thickness of the gear assuming we don't reassemble it without a shim so that brings us from the top of the tube to the gear but we actually want the center of the bore so in the absence of the perfect cylinder to fill that hole we'll then have this distance from here from this line to this line and then we'll subtract the gauge tube which is that distance and then we'll have the distance from the top of the pinion to the bottom of the bore and then we'll add half the diameter which is that distance which will then give us the control distance from the center line of the bore to the top of the pinion in theory. Now if that's heaps different to our control dimension then we'll need to make up a shim to put in here and if it's still out in terms of gear patch later on at least we should be close enough and then we'll adjust it by shimming the cup. Hopefully it won't come to that. Hopefully it won't come to that, but that's the plan um, for the moment. And it's lucky we checked all of this now because one of the modifications that has to be done to fit the locker is we need to machine a clearance on the top tip of the pinion here, which will change the control distance and also remove all the marking from the end of the face and then you're purely going off just the contact patch. Once it's assembled, strip it all down, shim this, rebuild it again. So at least by doing it now, we should have it almost right or pretty much spot on. Then we'll strip it down, uh, machine the pinion, put the, put the uh, ring gear on the locker, put the locker in, check the gear mesh pattern and fingers crossed, it's all good. And I'm calling it, we'll be done at midnight. <laughs> We'll definitely be done at midnight, whether the lock is in or not. Yes, I'm gonna get up at five tomorrow. So, let's get stuck in. All right. All right, guys, so we've done the calx, um, as you can see. Now we're basically come up with 67, and we want 62, so it's saying that we need 5.2 mil. Spacing, which sounds really strange, but we've been doing some Comparison. It's it's a big big thing. So here's the standard, uh, or here's the the new replacement aftermarket pinion. Let's just go get the normal one. Oh yeah. Oh wait. There's the spacer. <laughs> there must have been that well suction to it that it. Fuck I thought that was machined on there. <laughs> Fucking hopeless. Let's have a look. Oh, I did have one. See, Two mils. <laughs> Two mils. Well, that looks a lot bigger anyway. 42.4. So yeah. We had like 39. 39. Let's put that on the thing. Yeah, plus the spacer. Yeah. That looks so. like our five mil. Potentially more. No, it's it's a little, um, back pocket. I reckon that's 4.9 mil. Down a week. 5.9. Probably had another half mil to go. You reckon? Oh yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Not feeling too bad. 5.5. So it's five, five mils. We, we calculated 5.2. Okay, so I guess that means we can safely machine an extra spacer. Because like Ben was saying, once you put this in, you're pretty much fucked. If you it's can need to change it. If it's too much. Yeah. yeah. Not the pen Look, oh. so the tolerance is plus minus 0.002 of an inch. So 0 0.002. And then we can pack out the, the cup. Two millimeters. 
Yeah, because the other thing is we're sort of measuring everything free. Um, once yeah. you've compressed it all, it may, it may be fractionally less than that. So if we go for, let's shoot for the middle range somewhere. If we go 5.2, let's go 5.2 and then yeah, we can just shim the cup because there is a bit of extra bore in the cup here so there's some room if we really need to push the pinion up further. Hopefully we won't need to do that because that's just time wasted. That's a lot of time wasted.